What are the three things the immigration department is looking at when deciding your marriage immigration, green card case, or fiance visa? I'm immigration lawyer John Klaus Robbie, one of the Super Lawyers Award and Best Lawyers Award for many years. And I teach marriage immigration in particular at law schools and to other lawyers. And it's one of the favorite things I do because I love dealing with couples and seeing their, their love and passion to start their lives together. And so what we do is we have an initial consultation at the start of every case to analyze three different sections of our life to see if this case is appropriate for filing. Let's just jump into it. Number one, is the marriage real? And that's what we got to look at first, just by looking at people in a video consultation and see if that's what we feel. Is, this, is it real or not? Because the government's going to have the same kind of feeling too if they see you. So that's the first just gut feeling. But after that, we want to look into the relationship history, analyzing when the relationship started, how it came about. Was it through the internet the app, for example, or family members, they connect them? Are these people from the same religious group or, or language group or ethnicity? Because these may be looked at age differences in the sort. And also what documentation do they have about the relationship that could help them? If you want to get more information about the details of that, download our guide at marriageimmigrationlaw.com. We have a PDF there that'll guide you through the process and these details of what stuff are looked for. But yeah, are there joint leases, joint bank accounts, credit cards, travel records together, photos together, wedding invitations, letters from family and friends, and the list could go on and on depending on the circumstances of your life and your relationship. Now, if you don't have any of these, don't get scared. I get a lot of people who get really worried because they can't get it together because either their relationship is new uh, or they're people that just don't keep a lot of documents for various reasons. There's ways to get this going. If your relationship is real at the end of the day, it comes through and most of these cases are approved. Again, if they're legitimate cases and they don't have the other problems I'm gonna talk about now. Number two is about the background of the foreign national spouse. First and foremost, inadmissibility issues. Do they have any criminal history, health issues, um, misrepresentation or fraud issues with regard to the U.S. government, immigration violations, things that could prevent you from getting a green card or need a waiver? These have to be sought out first and discovered. With regard to the U.S. citizen spouse or fiance or green card holder, there are regulations against them too if they have certain bad backgrounds, but they're kind of extreme and don't happen typically. Now, in addition to the inadmissibility issues I spoke about for the foreign national spouse, the foreign wife or husband, um, there's the issue of their documents. And this is one of the unexpected areas that we see a lot of issues, in particular with people's birth certificates. A lot of people have errors on the birth certificates. It's kind of surprising, but we have people who have their names wrong, date of birth wrong on the birth certificate. It's not signed or it's registered 10 years after the birth. And these all cause problems with U.S. immigration. So it's stuff we really want to get into and analyze. So that was the second part of it. We first, you know, as I said in the first, if I look at the marriages, authentic. How's the foreign nationals background? And the third major thing that I looked at uh, is the affidavit of support portion, essentially asking if the U.S. citizen or green card holder can financially support the foreign spouse or a, a joint sponsor is needed. So we need to look at tax returns, W-2s, 1099s, pay stubs, income history. And then a big part of it is a thing called the domicile requirement. The sponsors have to be domiciled living in the United States. There's exceptions if they're not, um, but they're very hard to overcome in many countries. Essentially, the embassy, if you're doing the case through the embassy system instead of in the United States, will ask to show that the U.S. petitioner has come to the United States, living here, has an apartment or a home, and has work and all that kind of stuff. So uh, these are things we have to analyze. Some of them are unexpected because it's not thought of, you know, when you're thinking about this as a regular person, that this is important or not, but it is. And that's what we do as immigration attorneys, to dig deep, deep, deep to try to find these problems. I mean, we have issues where people um, realize after the fact, come to us after a case is denied, that they were married before, they're in divorce proceedings, and they got a, a initial decision by a judge, which wasn't the final divorce order, for example. They thought it was. They go and get remarried, and it turns out they were not fully divorced yet, so that's a denial. Or we have people who have um, who do the cases themselves, use these online websites that I don't want to name. They're way too strict on the affidavit support requirement. They say a person has to have full three years worth of income showing the required amount or else you're going to get denied. So I've had people contact me saying we're waiting another year to be able to show the income so we can finally file this case. And they've been living in the shadows waiting to get a green card to file a green card case because of this. And we look at their income, their history, why it is they're not making income might have been that they just graduated from college. So they just started working. And we're like, no, there's ways to solve this. Or maybe you could use assets, not just income, but assets in here too. So there's different ways to go about it. A lot of what we do is strategic planning to not only think about how the process goes in initial filing, but later on, if you're dealing with the embassy or an interview, later on when you get a green card, the removal of conditions process, citizenship, um, bringing other family members here, and just digging deep to know the whole situation and know you so we can have a long-term relationship, not just one, three, or five years, 
we want to have it so 10 years from now you come and we could just pick up where we left off just like old friends and that's a very important part of the process speed quality and friendship uh, is everything that we try to put in our in our firm and in our team members and also to our clients and customers who come to us so i'm immigration lawyer john kasravi download our guide to start marriageimmigrationlaw.com 40 plus pages of information on this kind of stuff, breaking it down. And then after that, schedule a consultation, jqklaw.com slash contact. We'd love to have a meeting with you to get to know me better and have you be part of our family. Thank you for listening.